Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel. Renzo here. Hello, Paris. The Black. Hello, Kay. Kay Wilson. Hello, Christine. Hello, Maggi. Okay, let's paint. Today, I'm going to paint Robin Williams. I'm gonna tell you the colors I have. Uh, titanium white, camion yellow hue, camion orange hue, camion red hue, permanent edition crimson, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. Okay, let me see. It's gonna be my space for mixing the colors. I'm gonna place. face here, the whole head here, bottom and top. Okay, maybe a little bit up. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna mix a little bit of orange and blue. A touch of a lizard crimson. Let me see. Basically, just blocking, blocking in on the overall shape of the face, the head, and the face. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, let's see. Here I'm gonna place the brows, the nose. Remember that I always split the face in three portions. Okay, one portion here, the other one here, and the other one here. Three equal portions. That's the regular proportions. Uh, from there, obviously, when I paint, I move things a little bit because that's kind of a basic structure. And obviously, uh, it's not like all the people is going to have the same measurements. Some people have a longer nose, you know, a longer mandible, and that's going to change those measurements. Another measurement I always use is I split this from here to here in three portions. Something like that. Okay, and on top of this line, I place one eye and the other eye. The base of the nose. And now for the mouth, I measure here to here, from here to here, the half. Now, obviously, you can say that his mouth is pretty close to the nose. I gotta move the mouth a little bit up. Like, let's say here and the nose here. Okay. Now I'm going to paint uh, the shadow first. I'm going to mix a little bit of ultramarine blue. These are in crimson and white. I'm going to use a little bit of medium. I use linseed oil. Just pure linseed oil. Sometimes I mix the linseed oil with a little bit of turpentine or mineral spirit. You choose anyone, it's gonna be okay. Okay, hello Mohammed, hello Joel, hello Halu, hello Michael, hello Waria. Okay. I just wanna paint a little bit of the shadow. Not too much paint, okay? Because I'm drawing and painting at the same time. That means that uh, I don't want too much paint. And right now, when I copy the shape 
for example, of this shadow. Because the drawing is not just about making lines. Okay. The drawing is, a, is about va values too. Capturing values. Light, midtones, and shadows. Okay. Let's say that's the overall shape. Now let's just gonna pick up a different brush. I'm gonna mix a lighter color for the light area of the face. I'm gonna start with pink, just red and white, a touch of yellow, a touch of black, just to knock down this. It's pink. A little bit of linseed oil. Everything's too pinky. Anyway, that's just the beginning. That's my first stage. Hello, Shouldary. Hello, Mr. Serge. Okay. Let's uh, knock down. This color a little bit. Let's paint the background. I think I'm gonna just uh, paint it a little bit, just just gray. Yeah, just gray. Just black and white. A little bit of glazed oil. Do you have any questions? Let me know. Any question? Okay. About materials. About anything. Okay. I think I did it just too pinky, but anyway, you know, like I said, my first uh, what I want, what I wanted first is just to add paint to the whole canvas okay let's say that's my first stage it could be right it could be wrong i know that i'm gonna end up with a skin color maybe it's gonna be more orangey pinkish uh, let's see adding a little bit of yellow and white See. Hello, Fatty. Hello, Melanie. Let's 
Okay, I'm gonna use the same color for the background here a little bit to add a little bit of light. This is something pretty common if you have, for example, shadow here, you make the background a little bit lighter. That's adding contrast. I'm squinting down my eyes. You know that we don't see that much here and obviously I'm not trying to capture or copy details. It's more about the overall shape and it's more about squinting down my eyes and compare both the photograph and the painting and see proportion. For example, I always, I'm always checking out this, you know, the light bend of the eyes. You are know, always checking out the central level line of the face, nose, chin, okay, the brows. Now we're checking on that. Now don't make those lines on your painting. Or may maybe you want to do it. That's okay. Let's see. Hello, Joel. Mick, Nick. Oh, I have a, f a problem with the autofocus camera. Uh, okay. I'm gonna check out that. I think it's okay. Yeah, I think it's okay. Thank you, anyway. Hello, Michael. Oh, Michael is asking me how, how old were you when you started painting? Yeah. I don't remember exactly, but uh, no, I, I, I thought before that uh, basically my family, there are a lot of painters, my mom, my dad, my aunt, an uncle, and Kind of, I have seen paintings all around me. I mean, I have, I, I, I have like some pictures when I was a baby, and the background are some paintings, portrait painters, paintings. My mom, mom's portrait paintings. I mean, they were she were work, working on those commissions. Then obviously, it's kind of a lot of influence know about it about art but I started to paint or let's say like uh, you know like old uh, it's, it's just like you know I mean when I uh, today uh, I don't ask my kids my, my my son or my daughter to do anything they do what they want it's not like that but when I was a kid it was like hey you're in age to do something to help the family you know and my mom was okay you gotta paint pick up this painting and you know feel the background and then the next thing they paint the face do something like that and I think the first portrait that I painted it was when I was 14 yep. it doesn't come out okay but it was a nice beginning Uh, my mom, uh, she she wasn't a teacher. I mean, she told me just pick up the colors, mix the colors, and just copy what you see. That's it. Go ahead and do it. Don't worry. If you do it wrong, I'm gonna fix it. Yeah, maybe that day, uh, because when I was a kid, I I loved play soccer maybe that day pretty sure I did it that so fast just to go out to play soccer <laughs> okay
there are some grayish or greenish colors on the face they are usually on the same same spots like for example I have this kind of bluish color there is always here on the nasal bone the skin color is a little bit greenish here a little bit here too it's not like obviously when we want to paint something more expressive we can exaggerate those colors more but it's not like we see it like green or or blue or something like that just pretty subtle okay and even uh, sometimes if you decide just not to add those colors just to keep a skin like one skin color just one color uh, that's gonna be okay too Okay, but just feeling basically now values, for example, always thinking uh, about shadows. Okay, I'm painting the eyes and I know that there is shadow here and shadow here. Shadow, shadow, shadow. I know there is some light here. Light, light, the nasal bone, the tip of the nose, the cheekbone, forehead, the chin light here but there is a bump a little bit of light here all those things i know those things almost by memory okay and i'm painting following the photograph and at the same time thinking about those details that helps me a lot okay try to study a little bit of that a little bit of anatomy Hello, Joel, Marine, Melanie is asking me, do you paint every day? Have you ever got sick of, of it and given, given up painting at any time in your life? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that happened to me so many times. Yeah. It's just like, uh, I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but it's not like I'm, I decide to take vac vacations. I remember... Uh, I was in Puerto Rico one like for uh, four months and I usually when I get there I was painting daily 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 but for 10 hours usually sometimes even more and one day I just started to see a movie <laughs> and then I saw a second movie a third one and then I didn't stop like the whole day I don't know what happened and I started playing a game on my laptop Playing a game there, and I haven't painted that day. Uh, you know, and then next day it was the same. And it was like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna paint today, and I didn't paint it, anything, and it was like that for a week. It was like uh, every day was okay. I gotta paint today, and I, I didn't paint. And you know that's that was like I don't know I, I felt some kind of frustrated, but I think I, I mean I just I was tired. No? The thing is, uh, this thing about painting is my work, but at the same time it's a passion, and then that's the problem when you feel that something is uh, a work. It's kind of you you say. Okay, I'm going to do this for four or five hours and then I'm going to forget about this. No, but when it's a passion, it's like you don't have any schedule. You, you can just pick up a brush, pick up a pencil and draw any time. And sometimes you're going to find out just, you know, waking up like pretty late at night and going to draw or paint. Hello, Psenlu. Do you like the Beatles? Yeah, yeah, I love the Beatles. I think everybody loves the Beatles. <laughs> Hello, Dita. Hello, Sinet. Mm. Hello, Barbara. Hello, Mikey.
Yeah. And speaking about that, that's, I don't know if that's going to be a problem, but uh, I worked, you know, in an office for six months. It was like maybe more. Nothing to be, nothing with art. And that was definitely pretty different. I, I worked for kind of six hours per day. Per day. And after I, I left, I left the office. I went home. I forgot about everything that happened at that office. It was just I went home to paint. You know, that's the difference with painting. In painting, you don't know. I mean, you don't have a fixed schedule. You just paint any time, any day, any hour. I remember that that in Puerto Rico when that happened to me that I haven't painted for a week. I was in the, one of my friend's uh, house. He he works in restoration, art restoration. Okay, and there was another one of my friends, was a painter. You know, he he has a really big house there. No, he's living in Miami, but. When I was there, it was like, hey man, you kind of, you, you, you paint daily, what's happening? You're not painting. You're gonna paint daily, you're gonna paint daily, and I didn't paint for a week. It was, well, but it was, I think it was pretty, pretty good. Taking a rest from time to time. They were planning like, hey, I'm gonna have some vacation, and I'm gonna paint anything, that's kind of difficult. Okay, I'm stepping back, kind of I see a little bit of his face, the expression. Yeah. What about proportions? Mm. Okay, I don't know yet. Now, working the eye, you know the eye is something round, round like a ball. And if the light is coming from here, and you shade the ball, you're going to have shadow here. Okay, and you're gonna have light here. Okay. okay, now that's not gonna be so clear, obviously, because this sphere is covered by, by the upper and lower eyelid. But I'm making this explanation because be careful, sometimes we go with this light all the way here, like, like that. And that's gonna make your eye flat. You're gonna think always, okay, here's shadow. Why? Because this sphere, that's a sphere, and that's, you know, inside the eye socket. What happened here? I have a sphere too. Now, if the light is coming from here, that you, we know, we're gonna have light in this side of the eye. In shadow here. Okay. Think about this. That's gonna help us to with the the volume. Trying to get the you know the illusion of depth, depth, the illusion of three dimensionality on the painting. For drawing, for example, something that is going to help me for the drawing is this. The shape here. And the shadow. Okay, copying that, that definitely helps. Okay, obviously at the same time we got to know that here's the zygomatic bone or the cheekbone in this area 
and this is fat tissue okay Okay, squinting down my eyes, and I think it is okay. Hello, Lee Olai Wiggy La Jones. Okay, I'm thinking, okay, I'm thinking. Yeah, okay. Let's continue this. Pick up a darker color. Let's blend a little bit this. Okay, let's step back. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely, I'm not gonna paint uh, this shadow this dark, the dark black, the photograph. Is, that's too dark. I mean, that's black, obviously. I'm gonna go darkening up this little by little, okay? And I think he's he was blonde, or he had black hair. Let me look for the color photograph. Just a second. Yeah, I think he, he was blown. see I have to stop step back compare think no I want to get the likeness look like he's watching two one you know to the left okay I'm gonna draw the eyes because I mean that's I don't like that. I want to see him just uh, watching just directly to, like, just like the photograph. He has like a nice look. Huh? I mean, his eyes. Okay, let me look for a color image to see the color of his eyes. 
Okay, I'm, let me see, let me see. Somebody knows. Okay, I think he had blue eyes. Green eyes, blue eyes. I don't find any, any, I don't find any photograph, like a big photograph that shows the color of his eyes. Oh, I found one, I found one. Yeah, I think he, he had blue eyes. Let's add a little bit of blue. Okay, I paint usually a little bit on one area and then move to like like I paint the eyes and the eyes a little bit. I work on the eyes a little bit and then I move to the nose. I don't stay like too much in one area, especially uh, because I love to draw and paint at the same time. Obviously, I gotta I, I have to step back and always thinking about the relationship between the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Okay, speaking about uh, Puerto Rico, I'm trying to remember. I mean, I, I, I have been in Puerto Rico like 10 times in my life. Like, I used to work with an art gallery there. I worked with that gallery, f I think, for five or six years. Maybe more. You know, I got introduced to that gallery for a gallery here in Peru. Another gall gold gallery it was called Praxis. I remember that that was a pretty famous gallery here in Peru, and I mean, it was pretty famous there in Miami, New York, Argentina. It was pretty nice. I uh, remember uh, I was about to work with the Praxis Gallery in Miami. I, will, I was pretty young. I mean, when you're young, you don't know about business. You don't know how, I mean, you have an idea, you know, but you're not really aware of the things that works behind yeah, the art gallery business. The art business. And I remember I, I, I spoke to the to the owner. You know, it wasn't the owner, I mean, it was the director, because the owner was, I think it was in Argentina. And this guy told me, hey, uh, you know, we can work together. It's going to be something like this. Okay, uh, let's say that the price for each painting is $1,000, $1,000. There, okay. Now, from that one thousand dollars, we're gonna split half the the gallery in Miami and half the gallery in Peru. And from the gallery in Peru, for that fifty percent, I will get the fifty percent of the, of that fifty percent. Uh, that was the the deal, and I said no. But that was, uh, that, I mean, some people, when I uh, when I, I tell some people this, they, some people think, what? That's not fair, but believe me. <laughs> believe me that that's, that was fair. That was okay. I mean, they have the, the clients. They make a lot of work. An art gallery makes a lot of work to promote a painter, to sell the paintings. I was young and I said no. And if I got the same opportunity today, maybe I could say yes. That's okay.
Or maybe no, maybe not today because I'm working here basically painting what I want, having a good time. But what I'm trying to say that that's how uh, the business and the art galleries works. And obviously, if you go directly to the art gallery, you're, gonna, you're not going to get that kind of deer. I mean, I got the deer because we cannot skip the gallery in Peru. You know, that was the, the ones that, because of that gallery in Peru, I got the contact with the gallery in Miami. We cannot skip that one. That's why one gallery got one commission and I got the other commission. At the end, I, I got like, 20% of each painting and I thought okay I'm gonna paint I'm gonna sell my paintings myself you no know, it's not gonna be hard I can do it you know it's so difficult <laughs> it's so difficult Let's see. Okay, I think I'm getting close with the eyes, but there's I see some mistakes, value mistakes. Uh, okay, I wanna read the comments. Uh, oh, speaking of uh, oh, Robin Williams had dark brown hair. Okay, thank you, Melanie. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna make the hair a little bit darker. Okay, I'm gonna make this darker. I'm gonna add another color. I'm gonna add burnt burn, burn sienna. A little bit of burnt sienna here. It's gonna be faster. Mixing burnt tuna and black. Okay, that's better. Okay. Okay, let me see. Okay, let me continue telling you about art galleries, my art gallery experiences. Okay, and that was one uh, one deal, and then I remember I met an art dealer. This guy he works in Miami and Puerto Rico and Cuba. I don't know. He moved all all the Caribbean countries and cities of USA. 
and I remember he told me, hey, uh, I'm going to pay you a thousand dollars for painting, per paint, you know. But he was pretty clear. I mean, I remember that was, he was so clear about, and he was like, after a year, I got to sell each of your painting, paintings and ten thousand dollars or five to five, five from five to ten thousand dollars. I was speaking about huge paintings. You know these creative paintings that I used to do at the time. Speaking about fifty by sixty inches paintings. That's that's because of the price. I mean, and I said, I mean, okay, wait, wait. Uh, and when you're selling those, the paintings like at that price, I'm gonna get more more money. And he was no, you just get one thousand for two years. Okay, what if you sell a painting for ten thousand dollars? What's gonna happen? Nothing. You get you one thousand dollars. And for me, it was like what? No, I don't like the idea. Uh, that that wasn't a good deal, but you know, an art gallery is different. But an art dealer, yeah, it's it's different. I didn't take it. I didn't accept it. Uh, he's playing me a lot of things that I think that was pretty pretty good for him because he told me, hey, I'm gonna pay some publicity and some art magazines. You know, a page of, of an art magazine is three thousand dollars usually, four thousand dollars, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna ask you for that money. I'm gonna pay for from from my pocket. Okay, I'm gonna make some promotions here and there. I'm gonna ask uh, my. I'm gonna show your painting to my clients. I mean, I'm gonna do a lot of work. That's why I get that from the paintings. You just gonna stay there painting. Maybe after two years, you don't like. You don't wanna work with me anymore. That's okay. I mean, good luck. You go with your own way, and maybe you're gonna be able to sell some paintings at uh, uh, those prices. And that's... Uh, yeah, that's that's the way that, I mean, for me, when I, he told me that, I think, okay, that's, that's pretty, that's... For sure, that's, there is a lot of in investment there, yeah? I didn't buy it. <laughs> and I'm speaking about maybe more than 10 years ago. Yeah, more than 10 years ago. Okay, let me see. Okay, I think I'm getting close. Obviously, not that close. But I've been working 45 minutes. I think that's pretty good. I have. A lot of time for fixing and concentrating here. I'm gonna add some highlights highlights on the nose here. Okay. Let's move move to the mouth. Mm, let's see. Uh, something's not okay with the face. Maybe it's the width of the face. Eh? Yeah, I gotta think of the width, about the width of the face. It looks like he has a more, a more wider face. A wider face. Yeah, let's see. Michael, say hello, Mary. Hello, by Pro Deep. Hello. Oh, okay. Michael is saying I was in an art gallery too today. I was fixing a broken window. <laughs> that was funny. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, the width of the face is not okay. <laughs> Mm. 
making this a little bit wider. I want to see the the overall shape. Okay, I need to step back. Mm. Yeah, I think that's okay. okay. One one thing is about the shadow here. The nose, maybe I should reduce the length of the nose. Okay, let's see. I have an eye, the distance between the eyes are okay. The nose, I mean, is too long. Mm, maybe it's just about the shape of the forehead. Yeah, maybe this is shadow is too dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to light up this a little bit. this mm, I have a no when we paint the portrait it's just like that we have a lot of doubts and I think the the forehead maybe it's the width or is the high something is not okay maybe it's the whole head yeah but something is not okay there but I uh, uh, I gotta see the whole face you know I look not concentrate maybe even the shadow here I can trick anything around the face, on the face, the relationship between the eyes, nose and mouth I gotta consider all of that even maybe it's, it's about here, this you know, that definitely this uh, uh, how lines of expression here that change, you know make he, making him laugh or more smiley and I gotta, I gotta see this I can see two lines here and here. Yeah. And the shape of his chin. You can see pretty clear, you know, it looks like he has a like a, a, a ball here, a kind of an egg shape ball. Yeah? Okay, let's see. Hello Monique. Hello, Joel. Mary is telling me check for head length. Yeah, I was thinking just about that. Okay, let's continue. Now let's work on the mouth.
<laughs> Let's see. I want to capture the expression here. Nose is pretty close to the mouth. Mm. I need light here. To create a bump in this area, the same here, a bump here. back check out Mary Saski does anyone remember Mo Moscow on the Hudson I have seen a lot of his movies, but definitely not, maybe not too much. Uh, one movie that we've been, I mean, I got inspired to paint him because we were watching a movie like uh, a week ago, no, maybe two weeks ago, and I thought, oh, okay, I'm gonna paint him, you know, he has a really nice expression, and it's, it's just like, when you see your his face, it looks pretty transparent. It's, it's, look, it's just like you can see his emotions, you know? It's like he doesn't hide anything behind his face. I don't know. Maybe I want to believe that. But the point is, the movie was about um, a guy that he got divorced. And he disguised, you know, as a woman <laughs> to be close to his children. That was pretty funny. I mean, the more funny things about uh, uh, I remember it about the movie is that he used to do like uh, some kind of uh, bad. No, but I mean, like I don't okay, I don't remember, but. <laughs> I remember that movie was so funny. Mm. Oh, but Mr. Doubt Fire. That was the name? Oh my god, I don't remember the name. That's a difficult name to remember. Oh, definitely. Uh, uh, they they should choose to some easy names for movies like that. It's too easy to look for those to be easy to look for that those movies again. I'm gonna paint his eyelashes. 
know, it's like it's not him if I don't paint his eyelashes. And the only the only movie that I saw him like acting like a a criminal, I think. Maybe there are, there are more movies, but it was a movie with Al Pacino. I, I remember the name, but I'm not so sure. That's that's Insomnia. There it was a some detective. He went to Alaska, I think he was, and and Robbie Williams. He was the bad guy. Yeah, but he couldn't make it like a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, no movie. Oh, Michael is telling me I think the left eye is off. A little bit of it. Okay, okay, I'm gonna check out thing. Another movie I remember when I was a kid. When I was a kid is uh I don't know how you say it in, in, in how to how to say it in English. I think it's papaya, Popeye, but in Spanish it's Popeye. I don't know how to say it in English. Papaya? Papaya? You know that big guy that has like huge four arms? <laughs> Was a sailor? how to say the name how to pronounce the Popeye Popeye yeah, yeah that's the name uh pop eye pop 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 eye <laughs> that would that would be the way to pronounce it okay anyway that was I mean I saw the movie when I was a kid yeah still remember because at that time the, the cinemas here now now you know you go to a, a, a mall no and usually the cinema is in the last floor and you find like six seven movies and you choose which movie what movie you want to see but when i was a kid it was different here it was like uh just uh let's say you can find maybe three four five cinema 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 theaters and there were huge, and they just went playing up just one movie, just one movie, you know. In the morning, not the morning, but it was like, uh, let's say it early, let's, let's say like er, early afternoon and, and at the night. And there was huge lines to see the movies. No, in those cinemas, they used to have like a second floor. I don't know how it how was the name of that, but it was like a second floor. Mezzanine? Mezzanine? Something like that. And you would stay online, on the, on the line for an hour to get into the theater. Okay, I'm working on the eyes and trying to fix the eyes.
Let's work on the nose. Okay, I'm gonna continue telling you about my experience with art galleries. Yeah, mezzanine. Yeah. Hello, Wendy Nutan. Yeah. Yeah, that was an, an amazing movie. I remember when I was a kid, after watching that movie, I started to eat, it's, uh, how do you say, spinachs? <laughs> Let me look for the translator, okay? Those words are not in, are not in my vocabulary. Spinach. Spinach. After that movie, I started to eat spinach. <laughs> oh, some, some, this is amazing how a movie can influence kids. Yeah, for real, you know, I went, uh, I said to my mom, I want to eat the spinach. Yeah. I remember I want to have huge forearms. <laughs> anyway, I don't have huge for arms, but you know I have hairy, hairy arms. <laughs> That's not not too pleasing, pleasing to see. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, somebody told me once, hey, I think you you should shave your arms <laughs> and i thought yeah maybe it's a good idea you know hello it's a van der berg yeah. oh mary saying robin had very hairy arms too yeah, yeah i remember that <laughs> Okay, uh, I want to get the roughness here. Oh, that's too much yellow. Don't shave your arms. <laughs> yeah, the problem I was thinking, you know, that they, yeah, maybe I should do that, you know, it's kind of a, uh, it could be kind of, you know, kind of choking sometimes, you know, when a hairy arm just shows in front of the camera. And now I thought, okay, if I shave my arm, you see, then I gotta shave my other arm because I'm not gonna, walk around there with one one arm just perfectly shaved and the other with pe perfectly hairy <laughs> I still thinking I still thinking about that okay let me see I think I got expression I, I still need to work on the eyes I something is not okay here on the tear duck uh, I'm still working on that. Um, uh, about both eyes, maybe uh, I need to darken up the sclera. Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe that or okay. It could be darken up the sclera on both eyes. Shadow here.
And what about the nose? There's something special about his nose is oh, the shadow here. It looks like I can see a, a line like it goes like this perfectly defined like that. Uh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I I'm going to just light up the photograph here. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see it, sorry. And I'm gonna save a copy and yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it here, okay? Yeah, I'm gonna try to put it on the screen. Just give me a second. Look at that. This one is more clear to see the shadow side. Okay, I'm gonna move it down here. I'm gonna move the other one up. I'm gonna move my uh, publicity. Here's my Instagram account, Instagram account up. And here's my uh, Patreon account. Oh, I just delighted one. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> okay. It's a van dark saying my son calls his hairy arms his fur. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I have this, just a second, I'm moving this image here on my screen. I'm trying to put all the, this photograph on my screen to be able to see. I, I need to have both, you know, because I'm working for, from, now I'm gonna work for those two photographs. Now I'm unable to see this side of the face with a different brush. I need different color, sorry. bit here because we need to create the illusion that this is like like this okay it has this uh, volume there it's not flat that's the tricky part to get that volume when you're working on an area that's dark that's in shadow here
see the mouse. Yeah, I think I'm getting close, but <laughs> looks like it's a younger version of my painting. But you know that happens when we paint, we move, we make people younger, we make people older, usually older, you know, when we start trying to work on more details and details, we end up uh, making people older. But I mean, let's see what happened. Okay, uh, hello Ali Farid. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> uh, okay. You gotta read the comments to know what, why I'm laughing, what I'm laughing about. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue working on the mouth. Okay, I'm gonna. Uh, I would like to continue tell you, telling you about my experience, experiences with art galleries. Good and bad things about that. Hmm. Okay, and now one one thing that I'm not proud of, but but happened. But I did is like uh, I got introduced with from a gallery to another gallery, and, okay, and then kind of ignored the first gallery, and I moved to work directly with the other gallery. And that's that's something that you shouldn't do, okay. I I, I don't know that was me or just I I I just love to say that I was John and. I think I just as excuse, but uh, at that time for me, is it was like, hey, I'm gonna get everybody's gonna get a commission, and at the end, I'm just gonna get like twenty percent, fifteen percent. That's not fair, you know. But that was the deal. I mean, now I understand that that was okay at the end. That, that's everybody wants to get some money. I did that and the owner of the gallery, the first gallery here, the gallery here in Peru, I mean he got he got mad and, and me I mean you know. Okay, at the end after like a year I went to visit him to ask him to ask apologize, you know. I said, Hey man, you know sorry about that, I mean what can I do? I didn't I didn't think at that moment and he was eh, no, no problem uh, but we 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 were we're about to start working together again but that didn't happen and I have seen him like for maybe the last ten years uh, he was pretty, pretty, pretty nice. You know, this guy, he was like, every time that that he sold a painting, he called me like, hey, here's your money, man. And some galleries, they don't do that. I remember I, I, I left a painting on an art gallery uh, here in Peru, you know, and I almost forget about the painting. And then one day I say, wow, I think I, got a, I have a painting in this gallery, I went there like after a couple of years. You know, hey, I'm gonna pick up my painting that is here, and the 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 guy there, he was kind of uh, impressed, like see me, like hey, uh, like when you cut cut somebody in something that is not good. And he went into the office, speak to the owner, and then the owner just showed up and then he told me, hey, we sold your painting just yesterday. It was, yeah? Wow, what a coincidence. <laughs> Here's your money. 
uh, okay he didn't sell the painting yesterday you know but they don't they don't tell you i mean I, i'm not saying that that's common you know that's not common it's just like i don't know what happened maybe that guy you know an art gallery is a business and yeah i have seen a gallery having problems like any any business i remember this gallery i was there in the office like daily and this gallery uh, I, don't, I don't mention the name they're starting to get some problems like hey i mean the the sales they were getting down they're getting pretty, pretty, pretty low and they're trying to promote more more here and there and they was just trying like any business you know and they 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 paying they're paying like five thousand dollars maybe more i think for the rent that was a lot and they had like uh two employees you know each one it was like four thousand dollars each one something like that i don't remember exactly and i was just there you know you know with, with uh, watching all of that all of that and i was wow that's you know at the end after like a few months the gallery closed because they were in the, they they were having problems at that, at that time like it was like they have to uh have each month like just something like ten thousand dollars for to cover all the you know the rent the employees and all of that and without paying themselves i mean the owner without taking any 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 money like for him directly like here here's my my my, my cut no, I mean, you know, after a few months, they closed down. That was pretty sad, you know, it's an art gallery. Yeah. And I, rem I remember, like, uh, that's, uh, I remember once I was there. I was just there. I was day after day because I, I, I didn't have any anywhere to go. I was there uh you know and i remember that that day the owner was speaking to me and he was like hey man uh this month is gonna be pretty difficult and he was like uh he sold one of my paintings you know like but it was a, it was a smaller one a really tiny one like for five hundred dollars and he told me hey do you think that i could pay you like in 15 days it was like saying, telling me, hey, they're going to take the money to cover some expenses here. What could I say? I mean, I said, yeah, okay, don't worry. You know, I don't need the money right now. You can take it. I mean, he sold a lot of my paintings and he was paying me always on time. Man, that was for me. It was okay. And then uh, I, I remember a woman came, came in and this woman was there watching the, the the paintings and she was like oh i love this painting because it was an exhibition at that time and we were inside the i mean the the, the side of the office all of that and she was i love this painting how much is this painting five thousand dollars in this one it's like this like that you know and at the end she bought like twenty thousand dollars something like that yeah, yeah twenty thousand she paid every, everything was perfect and then he was like okay i'm gonna take a little bit of this money and maybe more than than is my my commission to pay you know all the, the because he had a doubt like for a, he was a month behind on the rent you know and he was like hey well that saved me for this month but it's not like he was in a crisis crisis you know this guy he had a lot of money he i mean the the, the gallery it was just like uh he he loved to loved to buy paintings like a lot and the gallery was kind of his own store his toy i don't know how to say it but he wanted to work as a business you know he didn't want to put money money and then lose money and then it was like hey we're okay this month 
we're gonna pay this and that <laughs> you know what happened and then the woman just left and uh, the painter just came in the the, the painter that, that that particular painter that was i mean the paint the, and they came in and they was like hey i found a woman out and she told me you know i know i know her for i knew her and the and the and the opening of the gallery and she told me about bought some of my paintings you know and and she told me that she paid she already paid that's pretty nice you know because i just I want the money <laughs> and they I mean the owner of the gallery he didn't want to give him the money that just there you know he wanted to kind of how do you say that when you wanna just uh, just the money and then they pay la pay later and that, that was that, that wasn't that, that bad you know and he had to give him the money you know and, that, and he told me, okay, I'm not gonna be able to pay the, the I mean, the, the month that I'm just behind a month on the rent. He didn't do it, and yeah, it wasn't a, just after one thing and after another. One thing after another, and he ended up closing the gallery. I spoke to him after that, and he was like, oh my God, I wanted to keep the gallery, but I couldn't afford just to keep putting money there, just to keep the gallery open you know and the funny thing it was, it was the most amazing thing that he used to buy a painting I mean he was his own gallery and he used to buy a painting always he used to buy a painting you know <laughs> like any painter on, on the gallery he used to go there it was like sometimes he, he didn't show up in the gallery for for a month you know because he was working his own business he used to get go there to the art exhibition and buy a painting and i remember uh, when i was i had the first exhibition there in this gallery uh, this guy you know he told me oh i just bought your painting i was like what and i was like in my in my head you know you're not the owner of the gallery i mean what do you buy me a painting for you're the owner of the gallery i mean <laughs> And then I started to, to, you know, to, that was the first time that I met that guy. You know, and then uh, we became, uh, you know, a little bit close, not, not, not friends, friends, you know. But I was there like daily in the gallery. And he ended up just telling me more and more about how the gallery works. You see, it's just like any business that he need to sell they need to sell a product and sometimes it's difficult Okay, I need to step back. Okay, I think I think I think I have to <laughs> make I'm making him a little bit fat. What do you think? I don't know. What that looks like. Mm. Hmm, yeah, maybe. Hmm, well, something's not good. I don't know, I don't know what, but I want to continue working. I still have a lot of time to fix so many things. Hello, Cheryl Marie from Australia. Hello, Aldra BRG. Thank you. Okay, just thinking, just thinking, just comparing, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. mm. 
maybe the eyes are not okay. Uh, let's see that. It looks like I, my face is tilted different. Well, anyway. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'm gonna move the brow a little bit up. Darken it up here more. Okay, let's see. Let me make this a little bit darker. Okay, uh, something is not okay with the upper eyelid. I think I got a little bit of the expression of the on the eyes yeah the nose mm, maybe I, I need to make the 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 mouth wider yeah. thinking out loud here about the things that I have to fix Okay. Mm. Hello, Majas. Hello, Christopher. His forehead seems two cent centimeters higher. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna check out on that. Adil Harrington saying, I think some. Okay, thank you. Why things all one is saying proportion look off? But otherwise, it is beautiful, beautifully painted. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hello, Adish. Hello, nostal, nostal, nost what? Nostalgica. Hello, Garvayo. Okay. Let's continue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, something I gotta fix on the eye. Uh, let's see. I'm squinting down my eyes right now to. Okay, let's go with this. I'm gonna go darker here. Uh, darker here. Okay. A little bit darker here. Mm, okay, I'm gonna paint, you know, the the the, the iris. I need to see more contrast on the eyes. The pupil, sorry, the pupil. I need to paint the pupil. I'm just using black, pure black. In this brush. Okay, I have to reduce here. this up okay you know 
I know something is not okay. I still don't know what. Eventually they will. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, let's see. I need to step back. Okay, let's see. Um, or shadow here. Shadow here. Darker here. Darker here. I'm trying to find dark spots. Obviously, the uh, they represent some form on the face. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, oh, sorry, I'm not really reading the comments right now. I need to. Just concentrate a little bit. Okay, let me see. Uh, yeah, I think okay, I got, I think I got uh, proportions okay. Something about the eyes, just that. Yeah, I, yeah, I gotta find out what 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 is that. Yeah. Okay, about values. Mm, about the skin color with you know when you're dealing with likeness <laughs> and proportion all of that the last thing that you care about I think and values obviously the last thing you care about is about the color I mean if the color is close to a regular skin color you say that's okay But more important is going to be obviously values. Values are pretty important. And uh, the likeness obviously does. We don't have, uh, I mean, we don't need even to mention that.
Okay, that's better. Uh, hello, Joel. Uh, Caravaggio is asking me how to measure the proportions for the photograph. Okay, when I start the painting, uh, I just uh, you check out this book from Andrew Loomis. Okay, I, I use basically the measurements, the same measurements, okay, the same technique. I split the face in three portions. Uh, I keep this uh, the center line to to keep you know the distance from one eye to another eye, the middle of the nose, the middle of the mouth. The, let's say that's the regular proportions, and from there. I change those proportions a little bit to adapt them to to the face I'm, I'm painting from. Like uh, you know that let's say that, that that's gonna be like my my knowledge about proportions, and then I work obviously always copying the photograph. I mean, like I as always say, I paint what I see and what I know in terms of proportion that I know, and trying to kind of. Uh, overlapping those two things, what I see with what I know. Uh, Melanie is saying he has thrown dark rain around his irises. Oh, thank you. A dimple in his chin, thank you. Uh, Christopher is saying about the hairline. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, with wild things, yeah. The camera angle might not be full flat on, so my comments, the proportions may be off. No, that's okay. I mean, uh, I like to to get some critiques, and I had I have had helped here with some some people, you know, because after painting two three hours, definitely we're gonna get tired. Definitely, we're gonna get tired and painting a portrait is not it's not easy, you know. And a little bit of help that's always welcome. Yeah, that's even the something that we say between painters, you know, when we say, "Hey, help me a little bit," you know, let let me know what's what's wrong. What should I fix? I've been asked so many times to critique some paintings. Okay, let's continue. The nose. Yeah, something is not okay here. Okay, let's work on the forehead. You know, I need to work on the forehead. Okay, here is a little bit of hair. I have to move this a little bit lower.
need a bigger brush. I have to uh, move the hair a little bit lower here. Yeah, I think that's better. Uh, still no, I, I, I need to work on values on the forehead. For example, darken up here, light up here a little bit, uh, uh, darken up here. Okay. Yeah, let's add some wrinkles. Okay. Speaking about art galleries again. You know, I started I started to speak about that and it just is getting to me a lot of memories. The good thing about art, about painting in general, you know, for me, is like I've been, I think uh, the, the opportunity to go to different countries, I would, I would love to, uh, to continue to do that. But, you know, it's like, I don't know, I, I, uh, I think I love to stay just here without moving. From home, but at some point in my life, I used to just uh, go to Puerto Rico, like once, uh, like for three months, four months every year, and then to Miami, and then a couple of times to New York, New York, and uh, if I gotta choose, for example, what size I, I like it the most. You know, there is a place in Guatemala. It's just amazing. It's, it's a lake. I don't remember the name of the lake. Imagine a huge lake in a couple of mountains. But the funny thing that, that was, this is what I remember, okay? Obviously, I haven't seen any la last photograph, but it was like two mountains like that. And the lake there. And there is two, 12 towns around the lake. And you know, a pretty, pretty a magical place. First, to get there, you have to kind of go uh, going down on, on a road, like for kind of an hour, like a serpent, going down, 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 to get to that. Uh... Okay, wait, wait, I found something here. No. Yep. No. Uh, okay, that's one place that I would love to go back. Uh, I was young, I was in my 20s, I think 24, 22, 24. Uh, I met a woman, I fell in love for a couple of months. <laughs> uh, My wife, she doesn't speak English. That's why I can speak freely here. <laughs> There's something that's not okay here.
Okay. Yeah, I think it's getting better. Now, uh, a wrinkle is just like a fault in any in a fabric. If you have a shadow, you need a light. Below the shadow, you need a light. Okay. In this case, obviously, pretty subtle. Oh, uh, hello, Sophie Art. Hello, God. Sorry, I cannot pronounce your name. I, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, the Siri copy is not the left eyebrow. The eye is a bit small. Okay, I'm gonna check on that. Thank you. Okay. Hello, Sylvia. Thank you. Uh, Monique is saying, so happy your wife is painting on YouTube. Oh, by the way, let me promote my wife's channel. But well, it's in Spanish, okay? But anyway, uh, pretty sure some people here that's watching me now speak Spanish. Pretty sure. Okay, let me see. Let me find. Let me find her channel. Okay, here's uh, my wife. She's painting landscapes lately. He's painting, uh, he's making live streams. And, you know, she she asked me, okay, I want to paint some videos. I want to paint a little bit, on, you know. And I told her, okay, you can paint, you record, you know, you record yourself painting, and then you edit the painting on, on the computer. And you use this program and this and that. And it was a lot of, you know, she was like, hey, that's a lot of work. I want to do just what you do. And you know that I do this because, I mean, I'm kind of, it's a lot of work to edit a video. And she started to do the same like a couple of weeks ago. And she's painting live streams like, um, just painting landscapes for an hour. No, 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 sorry. Three hours, four hours. That's, uh, I, I place, uh, I put her channel on the comment box. Yeah. I would be happy if so, some of you subscribe to her channel. I mean, if you like landscapes, uh, if you speak Spanish. <laughs> I think I'm asking too much. Anyway. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see his expression. Okay, okay. Uh, I have to squint down my eyes and check out. Okay, obviously there is always the lightest light is gonna be always on. I mean, not always, but usually on the tip of the nose. 
could be a little bit on the forehead okay has a subtle shadow here, like a, a vein, you know, on, on the forehead, and another subtle shadow here, okay, I need a little bit of shadow here, okay, oh, thank you so much, Ardish, Thank you so much, Monique. Thank you so much, Melanie, for the super chat. Okay. Uh, I'm squinting down my eyes and trying to see the difference, you know, light, shadows. Uh, where I have to darken up more the painting, light up more, and uh, always uh, we have to think always that there's gonna be some areas where we have to add more highlights, but it's not like we add a highlight, for example, here, and we add the same highlight and we with the same intensity here on the neck or the chin. There is uh, we should control that. We should use highlights and contrast to create the illusion of depth. Okay, kind of difficult, but we have to try. And difficult, I say, because a portrait is not something that uh, is like uh, the nose is too far away from the, the eyes. It's not something like that. You know, even when we paint a still life, it's more easy to do that because we paint an upper here, an upper here. There is a distance, and we can just play with that distance to create the illusion of depth just adding uh, softening edges, adding more contrast, knocking down color but here is kind of everything is pretty close to be at the same level just the nose is coming forward okay to make the nose coming forward you can we can change the color on the nose to separate it from the color around the nose and for that uh, my advice always that's going to be use a little bit of color theory in color theory is pretty simple you know uh, it's like warmer colors are going to pop forward cool colors recede if you use that uh, you can create the illusion of depth even a little bit it's gonna be pretty nice okay I need to darken up here a little bit of green Mm -mm -mm. I'm squinting down my eyes and trying to oh, always think uh, this is something kind of spherical, the face. Okay, that means that if, if the light hits in this area, okay, it's gonna go darker, darker as soon as it is the, the form is turning okay that means that for example this area is going to be lighter this area is going to be darker 
uh, now uh, it's kind of let's say that we see that you know but uh, I mentioned that to everybody I mentioned that to myself because uh, I think it's, it's not enough just trying to copy what we see I prefer for myself to have this little voice that's my own voice obviously reminding reminding me myself about the things that I gotta check out like proportions like areas where I know that I have to darken up like I said at the beginning like for example in the eye I know that I have to make this darker and here a little bit why because uh, this is fear inside the eye socket and yeah it's kind of difficult to explain but I hope you understand me and if you don't understand me go to my patreon account <laughs> I explained things better there. <laughs> Hello, Blanca. Hello, Klaus. Thank you. Uh, I have a question here. Sorry that I don't know how to pronounce your name, but how much does such an oil portrait cost uh, it's not a secret okay oh uh, okay the, the, you know uh, to price an oil, oil painting you have to uh, the first thing that I do is basically uh, I place my my portraits here on YouTube checking out uh, this website Epsi and I started to check out a lot of portrait painters and obviously there are a lot of prices like but they move like usually all of them move around the majority move around 200 300 more or, or less than that and uh, and obviously there are some painters that they you know they move around a thousand even more and for me here for YouTube, uh, these paintings are a hundred and forty dollars, a hundred and sixty. Sorry, sorry, hundred and sixty. Oh my God, I forgot the price. A hundred and sixty. It was a hundred and forty, like a year ago. You know inflation. <laughs> uh, and chipping include and. I've been told that for some people that it's kind of cheap. I've been told for some of the people that's kind of expensive. You know that, just like that. I would suggest you to look for that website and look for there are a lot of portrait painters there in in Etsy and. Okay, let's see. Uh, about the skin color, I'm gonna start adding more color on the face, just little touches, okay? For example, more red on the, the mouth, more red on the shadow, on the nostrils, more red on the uh, the color of the upper eyelid that's close to the tear duct, more red on the ear, okay? And uh, let me a little bit of white here I can just add white or I can just add a little bit of yellow to make it warmer or light blue any color you want since the photograph is a black and white for black and white photograph we can choose freely any color
Okay. Let's see. Stepping back. Now the question for me is I add more contrast or not? I think I got expression. Yeah. I think it's close enough. It could be it could be better, of course it could be better. Yeah. I'm gonna try to make it better, okay? I still painting two hours. I think I'm gonna paint for almost three hours. But Let's see, let's see. The color I think is okay. I, I, I love this kind of uh, just mute, harmony, pretty soft. I would love to add just more green to this area here. Okay. Uh, what else? About the width of the face I think is okay. About the background, if I would like to add more color, I could add more blue to create contrast just with the face. Just simple contrast, okay? Okay, I'm gonna continue checking out things because I mean, I can see that the mouth is kind of, uh, how do you say, crooked? crooked? The lower lip, huh? lower lip here is not okay. Okay, hello, Chris. Okay, somebody saw, saw say something. Hello, Manuel. Do you sell all the portraits? Uh, I offered, yeah. sometimes I don't, but uh, did you actually ask me if I sell all the, no, I, no, 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 I mean, I have like a, a lot of paintings here, a lot, maybe more than 100 paintings here with me. Christopher, is normal, is normal the paint feel sticky? Uh, if you feel the painting sticky, that means that it's trying to dry. It's just that. Just, uh, that happens maybe you're painting for three, four, five hours, or maybe uh, and just your oil, oil paints, or maybe even is the canvas that is sucking the, the oil from the paint. And start to feel sticky. Okay, usually problems are always about canvases. Usually, usually. Check out your canvas because if the canvas is sucking the oil from the paint, you're gonna feel that that's kind of sticky. It's not because it's drying, it's because it just it doesn't flow on the surface. And in that case, you need to use linseed oil. A lot. Now, what I do is basically uh, I add every time that I bought I bought um, a canvas, I add an extra layer of gesso. Okay. And if uh, okay, I've I've been painting sometimes. I've been painting some demos, live demos, and I remember once. Uh, I went to paint to uh, with the school of art. I used to work in the school of art. Okay, we went to paint to make demos. You know, to kind of motivate students to study art. And uh, when I got there, I, I mean, I, I carry with me my oil, oil paints. When I I go to make live streams, uh, sorry, live demos. I went, I, I mean, I, I haven't done any live demos for the la last three years. I usually, I just use the sword palette. 
because it's pretty easy to know that just white, yellow ochre, red and black. I usually paint with that. Yeah, and I remember one, one time, I mean, somebody just handed to me a canvas and I, I could tell that the canvas was, it wasn't good. And it was just like, hey, you want to paint in 30 minutes and you have this canvas and it was awful. What I did, I picked up a little bit of uh, glue, white glue. It looks white, it's pretty white. Okay, and I added a layer of that white glue to the canvas. A little dry, that dries in just five minutes, ten minutes. And I was ready to go. That was a solution for an emer emergency, let's say. That worked, that worked pretty good. But it's not something that we should use always, but I prefer every time that you bought a, a canvas, add an extra layer of gesso. I'm about to add a little bit of orange here. I love the reflected orange color. I'm adding a little bit of white to the orange just to make it more opaque because, because it's kind of transparent. Uh, now another thing is that there is new oil paints. I don't know how new they they are, but they go with the name of Alkit, and they dry really fast. I've been told that I haven't used them. I just let him, let you know. And using the lighter image, the one that's here, the one that's here, just to, to see this area because the, the one that I started to use is just like a pretty dark. It's not possible to see anything there. Second, just a second, into Okay, let's paint a little bit of the hair. I'm gonna pick up a brush that I use for blending because of the hair. And this one, and he has brown hair. This was a little bit of orange. Let's see if that works.
a minute I'm gonna check out uh, always use a mirror okay uh, what I do is I capture the screen and I use Photoshop and I just reverse the image it's like using a mirror but obviously it's better but remember for everybody because I think if, uh, pretty sure everybody here has painted a portrait don't forget to use a mirror Okay, Monique, see you tonight. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. I think his face is more rounded here. Okay, uh, I'm not so sure, but I'm gonna add just gonna mix green. And with this, I'm gonna fix the shape of the face. I think it's more rounded. Mm. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna change it because I'm not so sure. I just want to add a little bit of green here. Okay, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of green with this brush that I'm using for blending and put it like this, just pretty lightly. Just a little bit of paint, okay? I don't see clearly the ear. I think that's gonna be enough. Let's see. Uh, checking out here in Photoshop. Yeah, something that I noticed that my face is tilted different.
Is, I don't know, maybe it's the camera. Okay, anyway, I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to move it. It's still too different from the photograph. Okay, uh, what about the nose, the brow, I'm gonna make, okay, okay, mm -hmm. just thinking, thinking, uh, okay, I, I think I need to soft some areas, just a second, just for example here. I think I'm gonna darken up face a little bit more. Okay, first I need to add some pure red here. Okay, pure cadmium red. Obviously, it's getting mixed with the color that's already here. Little bit of a and crimson. Okay. Mm. Add a little bit of light blue here on the iris. Okay, what about the highlight? A little bit more intense. Okay. Mm -hmm. Light here. Okay, what else? What else? Of course, there are a lot of things to fix, but I'm not going to be able to, to fix everything.
Okay. Mm. I think I'm doing pretty good. Even that my face is tinted different. Uh, I see some differences. For example, here should be darker. Here should be darker. I mean darker to create more to make this more rounded. At the same time, make this a little bit lighter. Okay, just a minute, guys. Just a second. See. Tu mi viste la no está fuera. Toma. Ve y sacas cien. Llámala. No, no le pides. Sorry, that was my daughter asking me for something. bit more of the of this a little bit shadow there what about some highlights tiny highlights just a little bit I added a little bit of this orangey a reflected light there I have insinuated a little bit of the ear okay maybe a little bit more I'm using a glycerin green some dark glycerin green some reddish color more reddish here here too I don't know if you can see but this is pretty reddish just to create some transparency here on the shadow a dark but transparent shadow okay mixing orange with red it's a tiny bit, and you see the brush number zero zero. I'm adding a little bit here. I want to make the nose a little, a little bit warmer. Okay. But since this brush is pretty small, okay, this brush it doesn't carry too much paint. It doesn't pick up too much paint. Okay. Now my intention is making the nose a little bit more colorful than the color that's around the nose, okay? Now this is pretty tricky to get this color right, but the intention obviously is to make the nose pop forward, okay? It's going to take a little bit to get the right balance there between the colors that are on the face, but we gotta try every time. Okay, 
I need my brush for blending. A little bit of green. Okay. What time is it? Let's see. Uh, Blank is asking me what kind of lamp, a uh, light. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I have uh, these fluorescent lights. I have LED lights, and they have. Uh, I think about this fluorescent. I have like four four tubes. These long tubes and lit lights i have one two three four more like eight is it some eight or nine lights thank your dish okay mm. let's see what else? What else? I would love, you know, I would love to maybe add more, make the eyes more darker. Uh, let's see, it just to, uh, uh, it shouldn't be darker this one, okay? It's just, uh, if we see darker the upper eyelid where the eyelashes are, it's because of the eyelashes. But in this case, I think that if I make it darker, it's gonna add more. We're gonna. I think it needs that. Let's do it a little bit, okay? And at the same time, make the eyelashes a little bit darker. I would like to paint this pretty dark. In this particular case, I think it's gonna. It's gonna be okay. I think that's gonna help expression on the, on the eyes. I could be wrong, but let's see. And uh, what about the brows?
Now I think I'm getting to the end. <laughs> the Siri copy Saskini could I ask you you could darken the line of the mouse Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's gonna add a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, that would be one thing. Let me darken up this. Okay. The other thing that would be darken up uh okay, uh here below the the chain yeah yeah okay let's see okay uh, i'm gonna talking up here first this area here okay now here okay now I'm gonna blend it I'm gonna blend it a little bit yeah that's okay now I'm gonna darken up with a little crimson the mouth Yeah. I wanna be careful. I don't wanna see some dark, dark lines, dark, sharp lines. On the face, is like everything is kind of soft, soft edges, soft. Oh, okay, I think I, I could dark the hair here. I think that's it. Okay, okay, okay. I see something here. A little bit of light here. Okay, I see a little bit of light here, here. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it for today. 
That's it. Yeah. Just a second, okay. As soon as I start thinking that I'm gonna finish up, I have to just wrap it up this session. I start to see more and more things to fix. Okay, somebody's asking me, could you tell me the measure? Oh, Sylvia, with your canvas in centimeters, uh, it could be like 20 by 30 or 20, 20, 25, yeah, 20, 25 by 25 width, you know, by 30 high, yeah. Hello, Nikki. Okay. Oh, well, Nikki saying that she just find uh, found out that have been serious allergic reaction to odorless paint thinner. Yeah, that that this thing that is. Uh, it's odorless, but it's just it doesn't mean like it doesn't have the same harm. It's not it's not it's not gonna harm you know anyone. I think yeah, we have to when I use that, I, I usually I clean out the brushes outside or or in a space that where I have a lot of air. Good night, Melanie. Okay. I think that's it. Eh? Uh, let's see if I add a tiny accent here. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny accent here. Do you know I love an orange reflected light? Okay, I don't know. I wanna knock it down again. I think Yeah, I think I don't need anything like like this here. I just think I love this kind of softness. Look, I'm gonna turn off the lights to see. Yeah, I can feel the volume of the face. I can feel the you know roundness in some areas, that's good. Yep, that's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, really appreciate. Thank you so much, Melanie, for this super chat. And hope to see you everybody again. Okay, I will try to go live tomorrow. I will try to go live like Thursday and Fridays. And I hope to get more free time to go back again. Like, you know, I usually, I, uh, I usually, I, I made like a live live streams, daily live streams. I would love to to go back again. <laughs> oh, that's right, Nikki. Ventilation and. Yeah, 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 that's pretty good. Hmm. Okay. Oh, okay, Nikki, Nikki, please check out your uh, messenger. I, I have sent you some messages. Because I went to, to the mayor and they are asking me for the truck number. Okay, thank you everybody. Hope you like it. Hope you have learned something from, from me. And you know that you can ask me any question, anytime. 
See you next time. Take care. Bye. I forget to darken it up. I was thinking about this, darkening it up, this clearer. A little bit. You know, this is something that's spherical. And I just paint it just flat. At least a little bit. Okay, bye.